И в тази лекция ще, използ... ще разберем как да се възползваме от три театра в маркетинга, за което Яна ще бъде отговорна. Здравейте на всички! По принцип, а, лекцията ми е на английски и предполагам, че няма да имате проблем, ако превключа на друг език. Не, давай. Давам, добре. <laughs> um, this is my first time actually being a speaker at WordCamp. Um, I was, my first WordCamp conference was three years ago. I was sitting way up there and I was passionately waiting for Null Talks presentation on content publishing to begin. Um, little did I know that three years later I would nervously be standing in front of you guys. But the good thing is that I think that this nervousness will pass in like two minutes or by the end of the presentation. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm really, really thankful for all of you who chose to come to my presentation today and to spend your Saturday afternoon with me. I will be discussing a, a topic that is very near and dear to my heart and that is strategy building. Today we will be discussing... Um, whoop, wait. I told you I was a newbie. <laughs> Today we will be discussing the pull approach, why it's important for you to change your game and to amp up your game in this ever-changing marketing landscape where millennials and Generation G users are actually dominating the playground. But before we continue, I would like to formally introduce myself. There we go. <laughs> My name is Jana Lambrema. I'm a multi-passionate woman, I'm a lifestyle and beauty blogger, and as I was presented, I'm the co-founder and um, digital PR strategist in Flumen, which is a small, oh, okay, give me a second. <laughs> Sorry about this. Which is a small company that uh, we work with, social media and creative. We've been working, we've been established for three years now, I think, three years, yep, with my partner who's right there sitting, yeah. <laughs> so we created Flumen three years ago, and ever since we had the opportunity, the amazing opportunity to work with brands such as Absolute Vodka, Pharma Swiss, and Shed, which is a NASPERS venture-backed product. It was actually an app for selling pre-loved fashion goods. Now, my career jump started in 2012 when, thanks to my blog, I was invited at an interview uh, at Fashion Days. I had the amazing opportunity to work with the people who actually helped pave the way for e-commerce in Bulgaria. It was really an amazing experience. After that, I went on to work in different agencies. I worked for companies like the Coca-Cola company, Lenovo, ING, Mercedes-Benz. The list is long. If some of you guys are from the agency life, you know how it is. So. Um, Another thing that I actually want to say, even though most of you are men, but if you have girlfriends or friends who are curly, I established a curly movement which in Bulgarian is called Borkadrici, and in English it's Team Curly. And actually it's rapidly growing and it's all about community, and it's all about women with curly hair. Oh my god, sorry guys, really. This is my first time, I'm a little, little bit nervous, but we'll get through this. <laughs> So, as I said, today we're going to be talking about changing your marketing strategy and actually introducing the three A's of marketing. Now, before we continue, if somebody wants to tweet at me just to let me know that this presentation was, okay, <laughs> you can do so at Twitter. My uh, handle is at Ms. Vandela, and everywhere else you will find me as Yana Lapra. Okay, so there we go. I don't know how many of you have heard about the push and pull approach. These are uh, very trendy marketing words that have been thrown around a lot. Now, today we'll be focusing mostly on the pull approach because this is where we see more and more brands struggling. The pull approach uh, is something that is very, very trendy today, and not, all, and not only today, but still. Uh, okay, there we go. In order to actually discuss one of the approaches, we need to get familiar with the two, just so that we know what are the differences. Now, the push approach is a promotional strategy where a business will attempt to take their product to the consumer. Um, typical marketing channels include TV ads, radios, newspapers, catalogs, sales promos, uh, standard uh, PR and direct mail. But please don't confuse direct mail with news uh, newsletter subscriptions because that's different. Now, what is key in the push approach is that the buyer may not be aware of the product or the service until the information about it is actually pushed to them, hence the term. The pull approach is different, and I actually like it better, because it's a little bit more, I don't know, diplomatic. 
Now, the pool approach focuses on getting the customers to come to you. The common sales tactics here include word of mouth, referrals, blogging, PPC, SEO, storytelling, the good stuff. <laughs> the, the interesting thing and the one that actually the difference between the two is that the target buyer is aware at least of the type of product that is being pushed at them. Now, what are the takeaways? From a branding and PR perspective, the aim of the pool approach is to draw people and create a loyal following, create a follow base, and just turn customers into brand ambassadors. Whereas the push marketing is more concerned with sales in actually the short term sale. So, you actually do need both approaches in order to, one, make money, and two, build a sustainable brand that will actually get you more customers, that will pay you more money. In order to see how the two actually work together, I would like to very br briefly go over the five steps of the buying process. The five steps of the buying process include establishing a need, searching for information, evaluating the alternatives, purchase decision, and post-purchase behavior. Establishing a need. Now, I really, when I was writing the presentation, I really wanted to talk about shoes and where you can buy them and uh, the whole process, but then I started thinking that selling and buying shoes is actually really, really easy. What's not easy is to sell a service, your service, your brand. That's the most, that's the difficult part. Because if we're talking about a physical product, it's, it's, it is easier. If we're talking about a service, people cannot touch the service. They cannot feel it. They're not going to physically use it from Monday to Friday. So it's a little bit tricky. And to make it even worse, I chose something that I have no idea about. And that is mathematics and financial services, to give you as an example. So imagine this. Imagine that you're a mathematical and financial genius who really, really wants to help small businesses win. You don't want to work for a big company. You want to help the, the little man because you're actually tired of seeing more and more brands fail because they don't know how to work their finances. Now, the tricky thing here is that you actually need to get to the person and you need to sell yourself. But what do you do? Do you go to a person and say, hey, do you know that you're gonna lose money in like three months and your company's gonna go bankrupt? You don't do that because you're gonna insult them. You're gonna insult them, you're gonna insult their financial intelligence. So what do you do? Do you hope that the customer will come to you? Not exactly. Well, you do hope that the customer will establish some sort of a need. A need of a financial advisor who will be there and who will help him with his business. Now, it is our job, once a person establishes some sort of a need, to be there and to take him on a very well thought of path that will lead him to your product or to your service. Then, what happens? Well, people start searching for information. Where do people start searching for information? Online. So, once a person starts looking for the solution of his problem, he will go on different websites, he will go onto Google, he will see if there are some ads about a different product, it may be a website, there may be another person who does the same thing that you do, remember you're an accountant, and he will start to wonder, Will this product service service me? And in what way? Will this purchase benefit me? And in what way? Is this even going to be helpful? Is it worth my money and my time? How will I even know? So by now, I think you know that you need to have a really well-built website that is SEO optimized, that is running ads, and that has those answers. Then we go on to step three. Now, there are a little bit of roadblock there. There is a little bit of a roadblock there. Because at this point, it is crucial for us to get ourselves out there and to get our product. But we need to check our ego. Because it's not about us, it's about the customer. So what is crucial here is that you need to do it in a very, very smart way. You need to let them know why your brand or your product or your service is better than the competitor and how it serves them. These points must be meaningful to the customer, and by that I mean that they need to answer the questions that he previously asked in step two, but also refer back to your mission, vision, and goal. Then we come to point four, to step four, which is the purchase decision. 
If you do the things correctly at step three, you will be closing the sale. But what happens after point four? Ah, this is my favorite part, because most of the brands and most of people actually dismiss it. They dismiss the post-purchase behavior because they have already closed the sale. So what do you do if, let's say, your customer comes to you disappointed? Do you dismiss them or do you help them? Basically, you have two options in the post-purchase behavior. You can have a client who is very, very satisfied, who can either come to you and say, you did a great job, or they can tell you nothing. Or you have the second one, which is disappointed. You have to be prepared for both. You need to bathe in the admiration and the positive reviews, but if a customer comes and tells you, this is crap, I don't like it, or you didn't do a good job, after the, close, after the deal has been closed, or after you have signed some, some sort of a contract, you need to come from a place of service. Be human, talk to them, ask them questions. Just try to see what they actually need from you and what they need to be fixed. Okay, so as I said, step five is crucial when it comes to building a sustainable brand and a positive word of mouth. I know that a lot of marketers actually dismiss this because they don't care about word of mouth, but believe me, this still works. This is still human behavior. We do talk to our friends and we do say, hey, I love those shoes because I got them on a sale and I got them from that store. Or they will be, if we use our instance, or if we use our example, they will be like, I have this amazing guy who is like a mathematical genius and he helped me win money and I'm not bankrupt now. So think about that. Think about the way to implement all those steps and how you need to be present in every one of them. So the takeaways from here are, Oops, sorry, I missed my slides. I do apologize, but my laptop's not working correctly, so I need to use my phone for this. It's very professional. So be present every step of the buying process. Give the answers the customer is looking for. Don't shy away from that. Check your ego and always come from a place of service. And last but not least, have a user-friendly website that is running Google Ads, that is running Facebook Ads, and is SEO optimized. Now, how to do all that? It's easy as one, two, three. Introduce the three A's of marketing. The three A's of marketing stand for assist, attract, and affiliate, but not in that order. It's actually attract, assist, affiliate. Now, attract is my favorite part because we get to talk about you. We get to talk about your brand, your mission, your goals, and your vision. Think about what actually pushed you to go and jump into the deep end. Think about what actually motivated you to start doing what you're doing now. I can guarantee it's not only the money. I can guarantee that you had a mission. You were like, I can do this better than this guy. Or I know that I can do it even for less money, just so that I can get it started. So this is what will bring the customer to you. This will actually close the, close the deal as I said in step four. This will attract them to you and you will be able to build your brand better. Then we come to the assist. Now once you've actually attracted your customer, you need to assist them. And you need to assist them in order to close the sale if you still haven't done that. So turn your own and social media platforms into a safe space where your customer, potential or not, feels safe, feels understood, and where he or she can find the answers they're looking for. Also, again, have a really, really good um, website. Beautiful, make it user friendly, have it, S have it be SEO optimized, run Google ads, just make it nice. Make it nice for the customer. Then we come to affiliate. Now you already have your customers and you need to actually start working with them. You need to start communicating them. But don't do the one-to-one -one approach in marketing. No, that's, it's not, it's not simple. No way, I'm not saying that, but it's kind of boring, you know? I, I think we can do a lot better, and by that I mean work with others. Introduce people who can actually be of benefit of your customer. Work with bloggers, work with brands, work with influencers, or better yet, turn your customers into brand ambassadors. I will give you um, an example from my work. Back uh, in 2013, I think, when I was working in Fashion Days, we had this topic in uh, the forum BG Mama, which I 
presume all of you know, it was, it was horrible. But it was horrible for me because I was the one appointed to actually answer and speak with everybody and talk to everybody. We had this lady who hated us. She despised us, but then again, she continued buying stuff from us. Every time she received an order, she would go on to Bay Mama and be like, this is crap, or I don't like it, or this is too small, yada, yada, yada. So it was my job to actually service her and assist her. And I did that Monday to Friday for three months. Something happened after three months. This lady turned from our biggest hater to our biggest supporter because we assisted her. And actually, she started helping us she started answering questions when we received, if we, couldn't, if we couldn't answer in like five or 10 minutes or five or 10 days, she would be there and she would be on our side. She would say to people, yeah, I know, I know this sucks, I know this isn't cool, but trust me, they're working on it, or it will get better, or this is not fixed. So from our biggest hater, she turned into our biggest supporter. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I want you to know. If you act like a human being with your customer, who is also a human being, you will have better relations. And actually, a person will be willing to pay you more just because you're there and you're listening to them and you're assisting them. So, as I said, these steps are crucial. Companies and businesses need to move away from a method that has gotten, to, that has gotten them to where they are today. And, that method is the one-to-one -one marketing sale. So we need to move forward. We need to actually be aware of who is our customer. Our customer is a millennial. Our customer is a Generation G user. Even if our customer is a baby boomer, that doesn't matter because they're not currently, well, it does matter, but they're currently not dominating the playground. And actually in the USA, a survey, a survey sorry, a survey was made and 87% of customers said that they would purchase a product or a service based on values, communication, and quality. So they're putting values first. But if let's say your values don't actually and don't necessarily speak to the values of your customer, well, you can communicate with them and you can give them a good, a good quality product. So the takeaways are attract. Attract people with your mission, your vision, and your statement. Use beautiful images because that is important. And use the power of story storytelling. Always, always come from a place of service. Invest into a user-friendly and SEO-optimized optimized website. Assist, answer questions, and be present. Educate directly on the apps. If you're using social media, don't post just for the sake of it. Don't post just because of an algorithm. Don't use hashtags like crazy just because you have 30 of them. Have a goal, and your goal can be to educate people directly. This will actually service you, and this will help you not only to assist, but to attract new followers, because the three A's are actually linked together. Affiliate, as I said, step away from the one-to-one -one marketing approach collaborate with others, be open, convert your customers into brand ambassadors while assisting them. I'm hoping that you actually get that the three are really linked together just as the, four, the five steps are linked together. Now, I would like to get you inspired with two of my favorite brands, which are USA brands. The first one is Glossier. I'm a beauty blogger, so if I don't talk about Glossier, it's like, I don't know, the mothership will call me back and will punish me. So, this is Glossier. It is a blog. It is a brand that started from a blog. It started from a WordPress-based blog into the gloss. Its founder is Emily Weiss. Now, Glossier is a venture-backed, data and tech-driven company, and it is indeed a people-powered beauty ecosystem. It is a customer-centered business where actually the customer helps decide what the products are gonna be, what they're gonna look like, how they're gonna smell, if they're gonna have some kind of a, I don't know, aroma or whatever. Everything is linked with the customer. Now, their main goal is to facilitate a digital conversation via their website, social media. They've also started using Slack and FaceTime. For Slack, they actually have a channel which is dedicated to their most, um, most active buyers. 
So it's like 100 people, or maybe a little bit more, who actually can tell whether or not they like product, what they like change, if they like it, if they want a moisturizer cream to be in a tube or in a bottle. And people actually listen. People from, from Glossier listen. Also, they do consultations via FaceTime, which is really cool because I don't know how many businesses you know that actually go to these, to these extents to actually service their customers. So what do they do? They attract. They attract their customers with a transparent business that actually states what their goals, mission, and visions are. They assist. They assist directly on the app. They assist, assist on Slack. They assist on FaceTime. They assist everywhere. Their social media is not only focused on promoting their product. Actually, no. Their social media is focused on promoting other people using their product, which is brilliant because it's not about us, it's about the customer. And they affiliate. I really love this because um, this is a custom landing page that Glossier creates for, I think, about 100 people. Some of them are bloggers, some of them are just standard people who have no interest in the beauty world, world besides using Glossier products. Now, what Glossier do is they actually affiliate and they work with those people. They create special landing pages and they turn them, turn them into sales reps. So this is one of my favorite bloggers though. This is, um, she's called Amy. So she has quite a big following on YouTube and she is a sales representative for Glossier. She has her own website, she has her own landing page where you can actually see what she likes, what are the products that she recommends. And Glossier give you, I think, 10% of your first order if you shop through her. So that's brilliant. That is using your customer as a brand ambassador and selling through your customer. Another thing that they do, which is more, it has to do more with the branding and with the pretty part of the actual brand, is they repost a lot of the customer content, especially the one that is pretty and goes with their uh, social media and Instagram feed. When they do traditional PR, because this is a traditional PR, this is, a, this is an event in uh, New York, uh, they do this. They talk about the customer. Who looks good? Well, you look good. But they're not saying why. We obviously know it's because Glossier is there. But no, nowhere will you see the brand. You will see the brand only like a couple of girls are holding like the Glossier packages. But you will, you will not see the brand because it has nothing to do with the brand. It has everything to do with the customer. This is what I wanted to discuss also. Please, if you are running a brand or if you are a freelancer and you want to attract people, do not plaster your logo all over Instagram. It's not, it's not trendy. And nobody cares about our logos. I can tell you that. The next example is Warby Parker. I don't know how many of you have heard about Warby Parker. They are, I think, a USA-based business. Um, they offer designer eyewear as a solution to a particular product. So they have a customer whose main pain points are that they need glasses, but they're students, so they cannot afford a lot of, uh, they cannot afford trendy glasses. They don't have a lot of money, but they do need them because otherwise what are they gonna do? So Warby Parker offers this. They can offer a home try-on service, which is basi basically a subscription. So they send you, I think, five or six pairs of glasses that you can actually try at home. You will see which one you like, which one feels good, and then you ship the other four back and you keep the one. And not only that, but they actually service their customer. They service their customer in a really, really nice way. They do it via their WordPress-based blog, where they actually give a lot of information. They have the eyewear A to Z gloss, uh, um, sorry. Jeez Louise, you can tell I'm a newbie, right? So yeah, they have this. I don't remember the word, I'm sorry. This is just, yeah. It's a cringe fest, I know. Uh, so they assist. They assist on their blog and they assist on social media. And you can see that right here. They do the same as Glossier. They answer questions on the app. And they don't shy away. They will never tell you, well, write us an email and we'll get back to you in like 42 hours. No, they assist directly. They even say, slide into our DMs and we will help you even more. 
This is what we should be doing. Even if you're a freelancer, because everything we're talking about today can be put into good use in order for you to build your brand and marketing strategy. You need to attract and assist, and by doing so, you will win more customers. And you need to focus on them and on their main point, pain points. Just get to know your customers, get to know your potential audience. This is what Warby Parker does as an affiliate. They worked, uh, they worked with uh, Tyler Oakley, who I think you probably know, he's also a very famous YouTuber. They actually created a special design with him, and uh, they, I think, uh, if I'm not quoting wrong, um, it sold out for like two weeks or so. So this is affiliate. So again, I just want to show you. This is what Glossier are doing. They are working with influencers and with bloggers, but they're also working with their main consumer. And this is what Warby Parker is doing. They're working with influencers, so who are technically their consumer as well. So even if you don't remember anything from today, remember this. The most important thing is to always come from a place of service. So. You can go on there, out there, and crush it, unlike me today. <laughs> Thank you. If you have questions, I'm free to answer them on the spot, maybe. If not, you're free to go. Okay, I have a question. Yep. How do you gather feedback from your clients? Well, oh, this is a good one. Well, you can do you can do Q and A's on social media. It's actually really, really easy now, especially with Instagram stories. You can basically make them, you can ask them a question and they can answer. You can do that, you can do surveys, you can send them out emails. Hope this answers your question. Yeah, but what do you do? What I do? Well, in our business, because we work with a lot of different companies, Um, because we work with a lot of different companies, if we are actually in, interested to learn what our customer is thinking about our job, we basically ask them. We ask for a meeting and we're like, hey, do you have 30 minutes on a Friday? We want to know how we can make this contract better, how we can actually help you with your product even more. And they're really, really open. But this is, I'm talking agency client, so I don't know if that helps. Yeah. Okay, maybe. <laughs> I will think of a better answer and come back to you. Anybody else? Nope. No, okay. No, no, no. Yeah. Wow, okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, from a company point of view, what is uh, the good way to approach and search for influencers? Good oh. practices? Okay, maybe. Yeah. yeah. This is a good one. I think I can, I can give you a better answer. <laughs> Well, um, first of all, you need to know the niche. Are you looking for beauty bloggers? Are you looking for lifestyle bloggers? Are you looking for somebody who is into sports media? Now, once you make a list, because that's where you start off, you make a list and you contact them. But don't do it in a very salesy way. Don't do it as a, hi, I am from this company and I would like to work with you. No, start, it's, imagine it like you're pitching your services to a blogger. Say. I'm a really big fan of yours. Even if you want, this is a dirty trick. This is a dirty PR trick, but we do it and it works. You can go back and you can go over their website and check out different topics that they have written. Actually read their blog, see what you like, and go back to them and, and tell them. This topic that you wrote about on December 2nd, 2015, really got to us, it really spoke to us. We love it. And do the sandwich technique. The sandwich technique is basically saying something positive, then selling yourself and then closing with something positive. So make them feel like they're special. Woo them a little bit. <laughs> ask them questions. Ask them, are they interested? They interested in working with you? Have they done this before? And approach them in a normal human way. Don't approach them company to an influencer. Imagine that you're the influencer. What is the way that you would like people to talk to you? Well, you would like to know that the person who's actually contacting you knows what you're writing about and actually reads your blog. And social media, you can do that too. Hopefully that answers. Cool. Anybody else? Nope, I think not. 
Well guys, thank you so much again for spending your afternoon with me and thank you for being so kind to my gentle newbie soul. <laughs> I hope that next time, if I get invited next time, I will do a better job. If not, I will just do it in Bulgarian and just wing it. <laughs> thank you again.